Hello, little mate. On this episode of Bondi Vet. What have we got? Oh my God, look at how bruised he is. Scott rushes to save the victim of a terrifying road trauma. I'm very concerned this dog has suffered some kind of head trauma. Oh, it goes up. Alison receives a rude shock when she treats a camel for the first time. Devastating news. Sorry, Cola. As a vet, it's very important to challenge yourself. <gasps> Hello. Okay, look, you've got to say goodbye at some stage. And Chris meets a cute kid with an embarrassing problem. He's going to freak out when he sees exactly what's on Monty's skin. Wow, OK. He's off the bed. You make my world a better place. Come on, there's your girl. You know, become a star. <laughs> Scott is on his way between practices when he receives an urgent SOS. So I've just had a call from one of my nurses, Nathan Upper Richmond. He said he's just admitted one of our patients, Freddie, who is in a really bad way. He's just gone under about three or four cars and he's really unwell, so I'm heading up there now. Come on, let's get there. Nathan is closely monitoring the three-year-old Italian greyhound until Scott arrives. Just downstairs. Freddie's all right. Good. Hey, Nate. Hi, Scott. What have we got? His temperature's 36.5 at the moment, so I'm just trying to bring that up. I put him on fluids. His oxygen level's low in his blood as well. Freddie? His eyes are really red as well, where the, yeah, where the blood see. vessels are burst. Look at that. There's a huge amount of bruising around that eye. That's really bad. He's bruising and even in his ear. Look at that. So poor little Freddie is really in a terrible state. He is very, very flat indeed. So I'm very concerned this dog has suffered some kind of head trauma. Oh my God. Look at how bruised he is. Poor boy, poor boy. Oh, that hurts a bit, doesn't it? OK, OK. It's all right. Your mummy must be so worried. Hmm? Anxiously waiting upstairs is Freddie's traumatised owner. Ivana was walking her six dogs in a local park when Freddie escaped. I didn't even know he'd gone. A passerby said to me, have you lost a dog? And because one's just been hit on the road, I knew it was him immediately. <laughs> so I raced over to the gate. And as I'm standing there, absolutely hysterical, the dog got hit by two other cars. And then one truck went over him and another truck. So I thought, well, the dog's dead. Just then, another passerby came to her aid. This guy literally stepped out onto the North Circular in the rush hour, arms up, stopped the traffic, and uh, scooped him up and said, he's alive, he's breathing. Scott now urgently needs to X-ray Freddie to look for any head injuries and also see if there are any broken bones. Oh, it's just awful, isn't it? Poor boy. With Freddie laid out on the x-ray table, you can really see the full spectacle of what this accident has caused this poor little creature. He is so covered in bruises. I don't think ever in my experience have I seen a dog so bruised as little Freddie. So Nathan, I'm just gonna take an x-ray of his head and neck. So I'm just spinning around this way, good boy. X-ray. So this is the, the fragment of bone there, and there's just a line here that I don't like the look of. So the wheels have likely gone over the top of him and have fractured his pelvis. But the fact that none of his other limbs are broken is 
incredible. But the biggest concern for me now is why Freddie is so, so very flat. And I think the problem is within the brain itself. Okay, come on through. Here's your boy. He's still very sad. Oh my God. Who's that? It's horrible to see him the way he is. All right, shh, okay. The good news is there's no fractures or broken bones in the head, in the neck, which is great. Amazed. But he does have fractures in his pelvis, I'm afraid. I'm hoping that just with time and rest, they may heal okay. on their own, but we'll have to wait and see. What I'm majorly concerned about is the fact that he is so weak at the moment. We can't assess what other neurological symptoms he may have. He can feel all of his limbs, but he's certainly not moving all of his limbs. And so until he starts doing that, we won't know mm. what damage has been done. Hey, you silly boy. Freddie will need to remain at the practice until the extent of his brain injury becomes clear. I just don't know how badly damaged it'll be. It may be that it permanently affects the ability to walk, uh, his memory, even his personality. Oh, Fred. I oh, know, I know. You're gonna have to stay here for a while, buddy. We'll see you all. Hello, mate. Hello, wow, look at you. Hello, buddy. Hello, sweetheart. Gosh, you're looking better, aren't you? Look at you, trying to use your legs. Hey? Two days after Freddie's road accident, Scott is checking on the Italian Greyhound's progress. Look how much brighter this boy is today. Hey? Yeah, he's a little bit sore still, which is why he's panting a little bit. But, I mean, look at him. Hey, standing. Good boy. It's all right. I just want to do a few neurological tests on his body. Good boy. While the pelvic fractures should heal over time, Scott's worried the three-year-old may have swelling on the brain, or worse, a permanent brain injury. Come here, sweetheart. OK. So he's doing some tests to check for brain activity. OK, ready? Just see what you're doing here. Good boy. Well done. What I'm doing is just putting his knuckles on the ground and just seeing if he'll right the foot. Good boy. OK, so this is the one that I'm concerned about. Good boy. But the right hind leg is a little slow to right. Now, if it was that he's had major trauma on the right hand side and there's been some swelling to the nerves, uh, that swelling can impede the ability of the impulses to get to the brain. But with a reduction in the swelling, hopefully we're going to see the nerves talking to the brain again. Scott now feels the best place for him is at home with Ivana. He's improved so much that I think Scott's going to let him go home with me tonight. So I'm really, really happy. I can't wait to see him. Hiya. Hey, Fred. This is hey, your boy. Fred, stop. Hey, you got to school. Hey, who's that? Who's that? Oh. He's so much brighter. It's just... It's a miracle. Yeah come from the dog lying in the road with cars hitting him and two trucks going over to here in the space of a few days is just incredible. You know, massive strides. But one thing I would say is brain injury can, of course, change personalities alongside cause numerous neurological problems. So what we need to do is just be patient okay. and let these next few days and weeks run through and then we can work out, does he have long-term issues that we need to manage? Avon is a very practical owner. She understands that her dog has suffered a major trauma and he's not gonna get better overnight, but hopefully everything is starting to come back. All right, so you get home and get well and I'll see you very soon. Yes, I will. All right, Ivana. Okay, brilliant. All the best. Thanks very much. No Thank worries, you. it's been a pleasure. Bye, sweetheart. Bye. He's looking more like Fred now than he was a few days ago. Fingers crossed that he makes it to a full recovery. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 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 
Come on, you're the prey. It's now seven weeks after Greyhound Freddy's accident, and the three-year-old is defying the odds, not only surviving the crash, but also showing no signs of any permanent brain damage. Freddy, come on, Freddy. It was touch and go, totally. We didn't know whether he was going to survive, but he's recovered fantastically. He's brilliant. I mean, we can't believe it. Scott is anxious to see for himself the brave dog's remarkable recovery. Well, hello. Hey. That was an enthusiastic welcome. <laughs> yeah. Hi. How are you? I'm hello, good. puppy. Hello, Fred. Wow. Yeah, as you can see, he's um. He's doing all right, isn't yeah. he? Hello, mate. Racing around. Wow, the fact that he's walking, amazing. As soon as I'm ushered into the house, immediately I can see Freddy, and he's doing so well. He's walking really well. He's running around. It's brilliant. So he seems none the worse for wear, considering such an extreme injury. Yeah, it doesn't affect his function at all. Certainly, personality seems oh, unaffected. Yeah. And, and that was the big thing. Is that we was just, the big worry. Yeah, we didn't know, would he have a complete shift in personality? Mm. Would you say that he's just the same old Fred? Yeah, he is the same old Fred. Yeah. Yeah. He's back to full capacity and back to normal, at least sort of 98%. So yeah, everything's great. Yeah. Well, it's pretty magical well, what yeah. you and your team have done. Oh, thank you. It is a miracle, really, that this dog is here when seven weeks ago he was literally on death's door. So it is a wonderful result. I'm really glad to see he's happy and that Ivana is as well. All I'm talking about with you, young man, is road safety <laughs> for dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited today. It's going to be amazing. Today, Alison is taking a break from her usual patients and is on her way to a very special farm, 45 minutes from Brisbane. I'm so excited to be heading out to the camel farm today. It's not a species of animal that I'm used to working with. It's all going to be new and I'm definitely going to be learning a lot of things. Good morning, Alison. Welcome Hi, to the Summerland Camel. Thank you. I am so excited to be here. Get out of the city. This is a, such a beautiful location. Awesome spot, isn't it? Before Alison gets started, owner Paul introduces her to some of the things they make on this camel dairy farm. Well, this is all our products here. We've got lovely range of skincare products. Oh, wow. Skincare? Yep. Oh, that's amazing. And we've got dairy products in the fridge. So we've got our camel milk, oh. uh, our cheeses even some uh, camel milk and honey vodka that we make. You can make vodka. Yeah, we make vodka out of the way. Camel farms in Australia are extremely rare. It's definitely news to me to know that you can drink camel milk and make camel cheese. So it's gonna be a very interesting day. So these are some of our male camels that we've actually saved out of the desert. You never have to whip a snip again. Like they clean <laughs> under the fence really that. well. The inspiration for the camel farm was basically about trying to save the feral camel in Australia. We brought 20 camels out of the desert six years ago. I suppose it's grown now to over 500 camels on the farm and around about 800 have been saved from the culling program. Oh! Hello. Yeah, no, that's the voiceover from the Wookiee on Star Wars too. <laughs> These days, most of the camels on Paul's farm are not rescue animals, but homegrown. Another thing we do at the farm, Alison, is our mating program. Oh! <laughs> Paul takes me to this mating yard, and in my disbelief, there is a mating going on actually right now. <laughs> and it's quite intense. Uh... As well as mating season, it's also the time new baby camels are born at Summerland. Alison's main reason for coming today is to help out the farm's vet with any birthing issues. Set me to work, yeah. yes please. So, uh, come and meet Australia's leading camel vet. Meet Margie. G'day Margie. Hi. 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 Dr. Alison, nice how are you? Thank you Thanks so much for coming. I am very excited. When I heard Dr. Allison was coming out to give me a hand today, I was so excited. There are not many vets that are willing to work with camels. So getting someone else to get as dirty as I do every day was just an opportunity I couldn't pass up. 
Okay, well this is Cola, and Cola should have had a baby about a month ah. ago, and nothing's happened. My first patient of the day is Cola. I do feel quite anxious and nervous to know whether she has actually lost her calf. She's definitely past her due date. In your pop. Good girl. So the first thing we're gonna do is a pregnancy test. And in camels, it's similar to dairy cows. We're actually gonna do a rectal exam. Just give her a little squeeze. So I haven't done a rectal preg testing that's since uni. That's okay. And I definitely haven't done it in a camel. So I think it's time you break the drought <laughs> and we have a go. I'm ready, bring it. That's it. Yep. In. Oh, it goes up. That's it. And so facing your hand down. Oh, yeah. Just past your wrist, you should be able to feel her uterus, which will feel kind of like a hard orange. Okay, now she's letting me in. There you go. So what do you think? Well, I can't seem to feel anything. Yeah? So I'm not sure she's empty, but maybe we should have a go with the ultrasound. I think that's the best option. When you can't really tell here, the ultrasound will give us a picture. Okay, okay. cool. Perfect. Let's do it. It's not the cleanest job, <laughs> but I guess someone's got to do it. I'll try not to drip it on your floor. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So the ultrasound that we're using today is a backpack ultrasound. We've got a probe that we'll put via rectum to have a look at the uterus below. And I've got these funky special glasses where I can actually see the screen through the glasses. Hey Cola, we're gonna do an ultrasound now. I'm sorry. So let's just go and have a look, Bubby, and we'll try and make it better for you. Hang on, Bubba. So you might be able to see the uterine wall. Yeah, I think, is it very, very white? Yes, yep. very white. Very, very white, yep. There's nothing. There's absolutely nothing, so I think she's lost her she baby. She might be empty. Just devastating news. Oh, I'm Poor sorry, thing. Cola. I'm sorry, Cola. I can't actually see any baby there in Cola, so unfortunately it's confirmed our suspicions she's actually lost her baby. Margie just wants to have a more thorough look and see if there's anything that sticks out as to why she may have lost her baby. Just found her left ovary here. And we've got a really big cyst on that. So that might give us an answer as to why she didn't maintain that pregnancy. To be absolutely sure Cola has miscarried, Margie wants to send a blood sample off for testing. So, taking blood from a camel. Yeah. Tricky, cephalic, tail vein like a cow? Neither. Um, jugular blood sample. Okay. If the results show Cola has lost her baby, Margie can then treat her with hormones to eradicate the cyst. Excellent shot. Absolute pro. Cola's reproductive future is a bit grim. If I don't get rid of that cyst, she'll never be able to have another baby. All right, off you go. Bye, bye, Cola. Bye, Cola. So the next thing we have to do is do a bit of herd health. So we're going to be checking on the mother camels and the babies. Oh no, who's this little one? Oh, That's Puddles. Oh, Puddles. I know. I love the name. A bit of a story to the name actually, Alison. So Puddles was born in a storm and was found later that night in a puddle. Oh my goodness. Little Puddles has had a tough start to life. If Puddles didn't get that essential first milk when he was born, it could mean ongoing health problems. Just have a look. <coughs> Good boy. What we've got here is a little camel that really wasn't able to stand up, really not able to get a lot of mum's nutrition in that first vital 12 hours. Right, so how important is it for them to get, is it colostrum as well? That's exactly right. In that right. first 12 hours. Colostrum is called liquid gold. It provides them with all those yeah. antibodies, all those proteins that they need to establish their immune system. So with Puddles here, we just want to keep an eye on his health and make sure Puddles is going okay. He's actually got something wrong with this eye, Margie. Oh, Just okay. Have a look. So I think he's actually got an ulcer, maybe from the mud. Oh, absolutely. And the fact that he probably didn't get his mum's colostrum. <coughs> so I'm not surprised if he's now got a complication. He's actually got another one on the right eye as well. Oh, okay. A corneal ulcer is a really painful condition where there's a bacterial infection on the surface of the eyeball itself. Oh, this poor little thing. It's had a really, really rough start. All right, Puddles, we're just going to pop some stain in. 
Poor little thing, must be so sore. We get out some fluorescein dye that we pop onto the eye and it will actually glow if there's any defects on the cornea of the eye. All right, the other eye. Poor little man. Do you reckon he had some trauma to his cornea when he was in the mud? I think so. A bit I think of just grit? lying in the mud, there might have been some grit and some sand. And because he wasn't strong enough to get up and shake his head, it's probably been stuck under that third eyelid. So he's definitely positive for an ulcer in both the left and right eyes. <laughs> If the ulcer gets any bigger, it can actually perforate the cornea and he could potentially go blind. So we better start you on some eye ointment, hey? Mm. Do you want me to hold his eye open for you? Good boy. There we go, all well done. So brave. Good boy, Puddles. Once we've got rid of the infection, that cornea will heal perfectly and Puddles will go on for a long and happy life. So lucky we had Alison here to pick it up. I see Dr. Alison's future in camel veterinary medicine as bright, the world is her oyster. But before leaving Summerland, there's one last thing Alison needs to do. Right, tiny short legs. <laughs> I'm actually really nervous just about the getting up. <laughs> Whoa, look at that, I'm riding a camel. This is amazing, look at that view. It's actually something on my bucket list that I can now tick off and I'm still here to tell the tale. I've had such a fun time here. I've learned so much. As a vet, it's very important to challenge yourself. Okay, don't judge. <laughs> Never. That was easier than a goat. It reinvigorates my love for all animals. I can't wait to come back to this place. So really rewarding today. Two weeks later, Blood tests have confirmed Cola did lose her baby. She's had treatment for her ovarian cyst and it's hoped she'll have another calf next birthing season. Puddle's eyes have almost healed and he's getting more than enough milk from mum to grow into a strong, healthy camel. Absolutely. Yeah, no. This is Monty. Oh, Monty. Hello. I don't really know how to hold a goat. Matt has brought Monty, a miniature goat, into the Bondi clinic for a routine consultation with Chris. So sweet. Can we steal him? <laughs> yeah, I've brought Monty in today because when I bought him, he had a registration tag through his ear. So I thought it was time to come in and get him chipped. So he's all registered. So your dad. <laughs> <laughs> But Monty is finding it hard to make it past reception. What is going on here? Of course. Is this yours? Yeah. How you going? I'm Chris. G'day Chris, Matt. Hey Matt. You're, You're a very on. brave man to bring... <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a present. It's not yours. No, it Watch is. this one here. <laughs> You're straight to take him over, love. He's not coming home, I'm already telling you now. Come on, step away from the goat, let's go. I can't pass you up Come on. You. you know, in here, some of us have to keep their cool and maintain a focus, because we're working. But all the same, it's hard to deny that Monty is a cute kid. Uh, okay, look, you've got to say goodbye at some stage. Okay, I'll show you, and you put him down, Jackson. Thank you. So, aside from driving the nurses crazy, what's the reason he's here today? So I've brought him in basically so I can get him chipped and just in the last couple of days I've just noticed him scratching away at himself a little more. Okay. Um, so I thought, look, while we're here, mm. get that checked out as well. Matt was always due to bring in Monty for a microchipping, but in the last few days he's really noticed that he started scratching. And even here right now, he just goes a few seconds before he can't help but lift that hoof through and scratch away. That's not entirely normal. As I part the fur on Monty's shoulders, I've got a funny feeling I know what's going on here. But rather than going for some sort of scientific test, I'm going to reach for some stationery. Let's try something with him. So, it is what it looks like. It's just sticky tape. This might look like some sort of kindergarten craft project, but using sticky tape is actually the coolest and most precise way of seeing exactly what's on Monty's skin. 
I've got my sample, but the fact is whatever is there is just going to be too small to see with my own eyes. We need some help with a microscope. Matt has only had Monty for 10 days, but they are already inseparable. He's fantastic. He's very affectionate. He comes with me to work and he's been getting the, the privileged life, I guess, for the last 10 days. He's been in, you know, lying on the bed and he just snuzzled up to you and, and then it's the chewing noise I woke up to most mornings. You said you share the same bed? Uh, yeah. Matt's chosen an interesting time to tell me about the sleeping habits of Monty and the fact that he shares the bed. Because if my hunch is right, he's going to freak out when he sees exactly what's on Monty's skin. The only reason I ask is because the thing that's making Monty itch is that dirty big louse. Wow, OK. So he's got a lot of them. Right. Now, they would have come with him. They're not something he obviously picks up yep. in his new home. Right. They're spread between goats yep. and between sheep. Yep. So He's off the bed <laughs> straight away. Not a chance Monty will be sharing the bed anymore. I think uh, the time's come where tough love this week. So he's going to start learning the hard rules of being a goat. <laughs> so we'll give him his treatment. Funnily enough, because not too many baby goats get diagnosed with lice in city vet clinics, there isn't actually a treatment specifically for this problem. But thankfully, a dog and cat flea treatment has a drug in it that works perfectly and quickly. So we're taking care of the lice? Yeah. Okay, so we'll give me the microchip and we're done. Great. Okay, mate. All right, mate. Okay, so now that one's in, we can get rid of the earring. Yeah. Well done, bud. And just when Monty thought he was out of here, it's time to remove his ear tag. Something I thought would be a favour for him. He doesn't see it that way. He's just taking some time to process all of this. <laughs> oh, don't show me that face. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Monty's not too keen to hear words. He feels that my actions have spoken louder than any words can. And right now I can tell that Monty isn't a big fan of mine. I'll see you soon, Mont. Things will improve, I promise. Right. Thanks a lot, Chris. On the way Cheers, out. Mate. Run. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Quickly. Don't turn back. What do you got? At the Australian Reptile Park, there's a surprise waiting for Tim in the snake house. Oh, look at him. Very cool to see that. Keeper Liz has discovered that their new tiger snake has just given birth. How many? Well, I've counted ten, but I stopped counting after that. All right, well, I'm going to split them all up. Are you going to be right? Yeah, there's only ten little tiger snakes, no worries. OK, see you later. Thanks. See ya. It's critical now that I get the babies away from Mum. Mum's job is done. She's done the hard work of mating, carrying these little babies inside her. But at this point, Mum goes in one direction and the babies go in the other. They can't do that in there, so it's my job to help. Tiger snakes are the fourth most toxic snake on Earth. That's pretty impressive. They live right along the east coast of Australia, responsible for a lot of bites and sometimes deaths. So I've got to be pretty careful. Just going to have a quick look at Mum. Mum looks great. You know, the belly's a bit floppy and she needs a drink and a feed. Other than that, she's in great nick. There you go, mate. You just sit in there for a minute. Now, it's interesting with baby tiger snakes because they look so cute. But in actual fact, they're fully loaded with venom. Their fangs are only small and, you know, maybe they wouldn't punch right through the skin. Maybe they would. I'm not going to take any chances on wearing gloves. Roughly in four or five days, they're going to shed their skin. They do that straight after they're born. So what I'm going to do is put each tiger snake in its own little container. I need them nice and moist. I'm going to put a little bit of water and paper towel, let them have a shed, and they'll have their first feed in a couple of weeks. I want you to look at that. How beautiful is that? That little tongue flicks. Hey, little mate. Hello, little mate. You can see all those beautiful bands, and that's why they get their name, tiger snakes. Hey, 
Hey, hey, back here. Back in there, Houdini. <laughs> back here, mate. Back here, please. Hey, where are you going? Here you go. Hey, you. Come here. Whoa. They're slippery and they're quick, and I'm using a glove that's safe, but it's awkward because I, I can't feel them properly, and yeah, they're tricky. This is won't stay in gym. Stay there, stay there. Stay there. <laughs> Lizzie, they keep jumping out of their containers. Oh, I get it. I need my help now. Yeah, very funny. Yes, please. Can you come back up? No worries. Come on, buddy. Hello. I don't really need your help. I just thought you might oh, like to. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. OK. I mean, they got beautiful markings on them. There you go, pal. The reptile park's role is to extract venom from these snakes that we send off to the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories, and they make any venom. These babies to us are priceless because they now will be incorporated into the venom program and help save lives. Before Mum goes back into her enclosure, she too will be making a contribution to the venom program. Oh, look at that. Two fangs, a couple of drops. Yep, we've got quite a good little amount in the bottom there. The average tiger snake milking has enough venom to kill maybe four grown men. OK. Thank you. If you're bitten by a snake in Australia and you receive any venom, there's a very good chance that that any venom was made from these snakes. Those few drops could save someone's life. Hi, I'm Dr Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content. And if you love Bondi Vet, then check out our Bondi Pet Marketplace at bondipet.com for a great range of Aussie pet products and services. We can't wait to see you there.